We are just after day one of the Ambition to Scale conference in association with the British Business Bank, Invest Northern Ireland and Intertrade Ireland. And I just have to tell you about what key insights came out of the conversation this morning and in anticipation of day two, which is tomorrow, tomorrow being Friday the 25th of June, that you can still register for if you're watching this before 9.30 on Friday the 25th of June. And I'll make sure I'll put the link in the post. Right, now, here is what the key insights came out of this conversation. Totally dedicated, A, to ambition, B to scale and specifically within, with relevance to access to finance. All right. First of all, we had Pierce Laney. Many of you will know him from Dragon's Den in the UK. He's also a secret millionaire. He's a blogger. He's a YouTuber. He's an entrepreneur. He's an angel investor. He's an all-rounder. A couple of things that he mentioned in particular. Number one was the importance of networking. Now, lots of you will already know that that's a very important aspect in many parts of business, but particularly, he says, when it comes to raising finance, that's really key. The second thing is the power of good communication. And he speaks about how you need to be able to convey your idea in a very short period of time. That reels a potential investor or even just somebody to take an interest in that can lead you to an investor and to be able to communicate your points effectively when you're asked to answer questions and to actually answer them with the, the information that the investor might be interested in. Really important point that he made as well is just about the goodwill that somebody may have if they want to invest in a company that they're going to be part of maybe a monthly meeting or introduce you to X, Y and Z. And he said, you know, a lot of people are simply busy. So after that conversation happens and the deal is done, it's important to factor that into the contract so that then you can really hold that investor accountable for the non-monetary benefits that they're going to bring. He also said as well, I asked him about, you know, the total addressable market question, right? Because I think sometimes we ask that question and people come up with spreadsheet gymnastics in order to answer it. And he said, no, 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 no. He said, the idea of the total addressable market is have you done your research? Do you know who your various different types of customers are? Do you know how you're going to get to them? Do you know who won't buy from you? He said, having really detailed understanding of who your buyers might be and how to engage them. That's really what an investor wants to know. He said, be very careful about hiring. And also he said, the older he gets, the less he is more inclined to just go out and do, the more he's inclined to sit, think and listen. Okay, then we moved on to uh, Stuart Harvey from De Tactics, and he was particularly talking about the lead up to the equity journey, how to determine if your product is scalable, how to determine if your business is ready for venture capital or private equity or seed or angel. And he gave us five key questions that I just want to share with you. Um, particularly now, he was looking at this from a product point of view, but you, you can you know, change it across to service as well. So he said, so important to know who is your customer and number two, what can you do for them? And I liked the simplicity of that question. What can you do for them? Not what is your product, but what can you do for them? And I know many of us can often struggle to say, you know, I do X, which delivers a benefit to Y, because that, you know, that takes a bit of discipline and particularly if it's your product or your service. I know for myself, you kind of just want to say, but obviously we bring all this benefit. But actually, if you simply just answer that question, what can you do for them? That actually can really simplify the language, simplify your thinking and give the discipline behind that empathetic perspective. Then he said, how do they buy your product? Like how? Is it online? Is it offline? How do they get to you? How will they reach you? Then he says, how do you make money? And of course, lots of us call that business model and we call it all sorts of things. But it's, again, simple question. How do you make money? And bear in mind, how do you make money suggests how do you make money from the point of view of, uh, from a profitable point of view as distinct to just revenue, unless you're going revenue and you're, you know, keeping the profit for future. Um, if it's going to be an investable prospect, for example, where either you're pre-revenue or else you're pre-profit and when you sell, then, then the profits are realized thereafter. But it's just a key question to ask. And then finally, he said, define an MVP, define a minimum valuable, viable product. And then he said, build from there. And he said, make sure and have lots of conversations. Another thing that he said, though, and I think it's important to remember, like we've all seen, to go back to the previous speaker, we've all seen people go on to Dragon's Den and be delighted that somebody was making an offer. And I can, you know, I didn't go on Dragon's Den myself, but I can imagine that would be the case. But particularly, Stuart said, it's important to get away from the flattery of someone showing an interest in investing in you and really questioning if they're the right fit, is your business ready for it, and can you both mutually move forward in a direction that, that you both want to go. Now, moved on then to a conversation then with the panel. So we had Elaine Smith from Catalyst, we had uh, Gary Davidson from Tech Nation, and then we had Mary McKenna from Awaken Hope. So they had a range of things to say as well. Now, first of all, we had a variety of polls as well that asked questions of the audience. And I just want to make sure that I have them here ready to go for you. And for example, when we asked people about what was their knowledge of accelerators 
in Northern Ireland. Um, the, when people asked first, when we asked this question first, the audience says there was just 7% of people who knew, um, who were very familiar with them. And when we asked people about how familiar they were with a support network in Northern Ireland, we got just six people who had said, uh, at the highest level of where they knew five plus supports. So we put this to our panel and we asked them about them. And, you know, naturally enough, like each of the three of our panelists are involved in accelerators and are involved in support networks. So naturally enough, they had a reaction where they said, we can't believe these statistics. Like, wouldn't it be great if there was so many more people that engaged with this? Why is this? Is it awareness? Is it suitability? We had, you know, a conversation around that. But from there, what was really interesting is by the time we got to the end of the day, uh, the end of the day being now half 11 this morning, by the time we got to the end of that, those numbers had dramatically, dramatically, dramatically increased. We also asked people about, you know, the relevance of a network. And 86% of people said that it was very relevant. That went up to 93% by the end of the day. So there was a loads and loads and loads of people who changed their mind as a result of listening to our three speakers. The other thing, before I tell you now what the panelists said, the other thing was, was that 41% of people said that they were going to uh, look into um, a support network in Northern Ireland. 25% of people said they were going to look into a support network and apply for an accelerator. 25% of people said they were going to apply for an accelerator based on the conversations that were had this morning. So the conversation and the content was very, very potent. It really was, and it was practical and it was insightful. It was from people that walk the walk. Now, here, to go back to what, what do they say then? So Gary particularly said the importance of having the peer-to-peer -peer network is that particularly within Tech Nation, they put a huge emphasis on knowledge transfer between people who are participating and also opening up that network then respectively out to the broader network of Tech Nation, which is right across the UK and then, of course, has has different relationships right around the world. He said, we won't move forward unless we do it together. And he was particularly speaking about the ecosystem in Northern Ireland. And their, one of their particular programs has, a, it's a six month program for the executive team and the founder. There is an application process and also that they're very encouraging of people to apply. And that round is closing in the next few days. He said, um, he talks about the importance as well of meeting people in person post COVID. He was just saying about how we can build a network in somewhere like San Francisco by physically getting on a plane and getting out there. Obviously, we can't do that now, but there's lots of opportunities to network online, including the conference that I was emceeing itself, um, as well as lots and lots of others. He also said that in terms of networking, you should give first rather than think about what's in it for me. And they have a Tech Nation Slack group for founders, which is free and accessible to people for them to digitally network in this environment. So then we spoke to Mary. Now, Mary McKenna is one of the co-founders of Awaken Hub. They welcomed their thousandth woman to the network last month. They run monthly events and they're hyper active. I have to say they're very, very active, very warm and inclusive community. And um, so she was talking about that, there, that the Northern Ireland ecosystem to support entrepreneurs is awash with resources and supports and, and various other different things like that. But you have to go out and get them. Interesting point she made is she said, one of the key things you need to do as an entrepreneur is to resource your business. So she says, you need to go out and look for the resources that are out there and bring them all together so, so that then you can pursue the path of your business in the best way. She told us the story of a coat, right? She said she moved to London on, on a Sunday night from Derry. And then, so then she went in, she said she couldn't fit the coat in the suitcase. So she went in anyway to this, into this event where it was on, where an event was on. Someone gave her a coat and she left. She says it was stuffed full of business cards that she subsequently met her co-founder, Sinead Crowley, and, um, and so many other things as well uh, besides. She spoke about the difference between social capital and reputational capital. If somebody introduces you to somebody else, make sure and have the respect to make sure that you follow up on that and that you thank them accordingly. She also said, and this is, I quote, she said, a support network is the foundation of business. Then we had Elaine Smith and she, she recommended the Disciplined Entrepreneur's book. She spoke about the international support that's within their own um, accelerator and the importance of doing that. She said that they have, and what you need as someone with real ambition to scale is exposure to world class input. She said that there is a financial commitment for what they do. Uh, of up to £2,000, that it's a week-long um, attendance at MIT and there's workshops and there's meetups and you really need to be bought into the accelerator to get the most out of it and, of course, to actively participate in the peer-to-peer. -peer. She said what you need to be able to prove is that there's evidence that there is an opportunity to solve a problem that customers will pay for with high potential. And then finally, she said what Northern Ireland needs to do is to see the potential, drive the ambition, and then you'll attract the talent and the funding. See you tomorrow morning. Don't miss it. We've got so many fantastic people ready to go.